Hi everybody, it's Wanda. I did a couple of paintings the other night off camera and intended to get right back to it the next day and I hurt my back. And um, that was on Wednesday morning. I cranked it up sideways somehow or the other and um, I really wasn't able to function until last night, which was Saturday. I uh, finally got to where I could halfway get up and down my basement steps. So I wanted to show you the two. I wish I had done these on, cam on camera now because I'm so happy with how they turned out. But first I want to explain. I had watched Sherry on Sherry's Life do a cloud pour that came out stunning. And she explained that she mixed her base coat, one part Artist Loft White to three parts Floetrol. So that's what I've done and thinned it down, covered my canvas with it. And then she used one part Artist Loft Flow White and one part Deco Art Satin Enamel. So I had some that I had bought this on clearance for $2.24, it's normally $9. And it's a beautiful sable color. So I wanted to try it with more of an earth tone look instead of a sky cloudy look and see what would happen. So I came downstairs and I mixed mine like she said she mixed hers, one part Artist Loft White, one part Deco Art Satin, and one part Floetrol, not two and then thinned it out with water. So I went with that color. This is a parchment color that I had mixed. It's been sitting around for a while. I think I put a little bit of burnt umber and some white. This is a burnt umber. This is my Payne's gray that I made, and it's almost a navy blue. Um, it's black with, it's phalo blue with some black in it, and then maybe just a little bit of white to kind of gray it down some but it's almost a navy blue. And I'm pretty sure that's the one that I used the other night. So here is the first one that I poured using Sherry's uh, mixture, the way she mixed hers up. And I really liked it. I thought it turned out pretty, not quite as cloudy in the cloud effect type, you know, up in here as she got. But um, I had paint left over, so I did a traveling ring pour and I did this one on a 10 by 20, and I absolutely love how it turned out and how the rings really showed. Um, got some shadow coming in here, so I don't know if you can see this or not, but um, actually the way I did it was I started in the middle with like a straight pour, and then I traveled up this way, and when I got to the end of the canvas, I stopped I came back down below that ring pour right at the edge of it and started doing it again down this way. And that's what I ended up with. So I'm going to try, I think the same colors mixed the same way and see what happens. And I do remember that when I started out, I only put a tiny, tiny bit of the lightest color. So I'm gonna put that in and I think I'm going to go with the burnt umber next. Hope I have these mixed thin enough. I really did try to get them super thin. To, what's to me super thin. Um, I need about three ounces, but I already have a base coat, but I still want at least a couple of layers of color. I don't remember if I went back in with that lighter color later or not. I bet I did from the way it looks out there. Um, so, let me put some more of this in. I may go with a little extra paint just to see what happens. And this time I may put just a little bit of that lighter color I don't remember, I honestly don't remember if I put that in before or not. It's been so many days and I had such a hard week. I mean, I really was hurting. I've never hurt my back that bad. 
and had it last that long. So, we will see what happens. Got a blob, a blob <clears throat> of some kind of blob. And I hit my finger on the end of the cup. I don't see my light color very much. So I have no idea how this is going to turn out. see something in there. That was it. It was causing my ring to go wonky. Pulling it. Since I seem to have what looks like clouds here, I'm going to take this corner off. Got it back down in the middle now. That Payne's Gray looks so pretty in there. Let's see if I can fix this corner with it a little bit. That corner's cut. 
covered, so. Since I almost have this one covered, I'm gonna go to this corner right here. Okay. I like this. I love these colors. I think these colors look pretty together. Um, Blue and brown, to me, always look good together, but most people use lighter colors of blue and brown. And that paint's gray is coming through as a dark gray, but it's like it has sort of a blue tint to it, like an undertone. So, I like this one. I think I'm gonna leave it. It's a little bit weird looking right down in here, and these kinda stretch some. But, um, hopefully I have enough paint off and there's not too much paint left on the canvas. I think it's okay. So, I'm pretty happy with this one. I'm not real happy with that corner right there. So, so if I can get some brown or gray on it. Um... This corner seems to be covered pretty good. So, I will take the camera down and give you all a close-up. So this is how it looks, and I absolutely love these colors. I showed these paintings to my daughter today and she said she thought they were just beautiful, so. Maybe some other people will like them too. I still didn't get as much cloud, so I wonder if the White makes a difference, you know, the being white instead of the sable color, but I'm still happy with it. Those lines are so pretty. Probably would have been even more defined if I'd have put more of that light color in there, but I really just didn't want too much light. I wanted it to be earth toned. So all it did after it swished around some in the bottom of the cup was it lightened up that sable, I think, a little bit right there in the middle. But the middle's not perfect, but I'm still happy with it. So, let me know what you think about this color combination. I, I think this is a success. I like this one. I hope you all do. So, thank you for watching and hanging in there with me, and have a great evening wherever you are.